friend of mine asked me to uh, make a video. Can't talk too loud because we got a neighbor next door and <laughs> he was banging, banging on the door about five o'clock in the morning yesterday because I, I turned the volume up because I was in the bathroom uh, doing my cathing. Um, I mean, just to tell you, uh, so he wanted me to describe kind of, you know, what, what it is to survive, uh, you know, a, a major injury or a neck injury and, uh, you know, what it's like to uh, try to survive on your own because you're eventually going to get kicked out. Now, I imagine a lot of people, you know, they have a relative and might be checking up on them or, uh, or even a wife, you know, but, um, you know, I'm completely on my own because uh, I got nobody here in Virginia. Um, so I just wanted to kind of talk about things. Uh, first thing was, uh, I mean, way going way back to the beginning, was the, um, uh, if you got any sort of faculty about you, uh, and you're on your way to the hospital, and in my case, you know, it was, what, about a month, a month and a half or so that I laid in a bed, and they rolled me, and I'd poop in the bed, and they'd roll me to one side and roll me to the other because I couldn't even move. You know, and all you can do is just lay there and stare at the ceiling, you know, and uh, I mean, look at the atrophy. Look, look at my God, look, I got my arms, they're, they're, they're like, they're like scarecrow arms, man. <laughs> you know, and, uh, now I've started working on the left arm, but I got the broken collarbone on the right. So this arm's just going to be puny for a while. And I've learned my lesson. Don't, uh, don't do any exercises. In fact, I'm actually typing on the computer with one hand now because I'm trying to really minimize the use of this arm and I might uh, immobilize it. I'm gonna to talk to the doc about that. Um, but anyway, the, the, the first moral of the story was the uh, paramedics, when they grabbed me, one of the guys goes, get the cell phone, get the cell phone. And I'm gonna tell you what, this was my lifeline for a month and a half in the hospital, as crazy as that sounds. Now, he didn't get the charger, <laughs> but uh, I, eventually found places I could get it charged. It, it took, I mean, you know, I would ask every nurse, every doctor, you know, hey, you got, you know where a charger is for the phone? Um, so that was one problem, but uh, let's just get into uh, life in the room. And this is what he wanted me to make, uh, my buddy. So I, I just kind of put together a bunch of stuff on the table here. I just figured I'd do it from the wheelchair. All right, so uh, first thing is it's 3.30 in the morning. And I got some decaf coffee, and what I've done is I put a little bit of honey in here and, uh, and some cream. And uh, this will actually help me get back to sleep because, um, you know, when you're, when you're on a schedule, you know, I've got four-hour medications, I've got eight-hour medications, and then, of course, the new antibiotics are 12-hour medications. And then, of course, you have to cath. Now, it used to be I was supposed to cath every four hours. Um, now I'm running out of cathing supplies, which is really scary, uh, because your bladder can only go about eight hours uh, before you've got a major problem. For example, I just cathed, uh, I waited six hours this time, but you know, I'm trying to drink a lot of liquids, um, per se, I mean, I got to drink Metamucil, and I've got cranberry juice, and I've got um, Ingleberry, and I've got prune juice, and, uh, and then of course water, and, uh, and then I drink you know, coffee, and uh, so, you know, that bladder can fill up pretty quick. And uh, I just did over a thousand milliliters, which you're not supposed to do, because that's, um, that's hard on your bladder, you know. I mean, most people, you know, you're peeing at about, you know, 400, 500 milliliters, um, so to drain a thousand, but, but the, 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 the danger is, is running out of caffeine supplies. So I'm trying to extend, every, I'm running out of everything at this point because um, I've had a hard time getting the, uh, the remote people involved. Like I said, I got the primary care position, so. So those are the first two things. Set the coffee down. By the way, you're not, you know, unless you're feeling really great, which I am right now, um, you're not supposed to lean over like that because you could face plant. Um, and then this chair is not locked, you know. I don't. I, I haven't locked it because I want to be able to roll around so that I can kind of show you what's on the table. Um, so let's, let's get that going. There you go. All right, so the first thing is, you know, I'm constantly going through everything that people bring me. Um, you know, uh, the real estate agent was out here. I, I gave that story uh, about me picking up my antibiotics uh, the other day. And uh, she brought my uh, bathroom backpack, thank God. I guess uh, um, my mom's best friend 
found that backpack and just threw it in, in her car. And so, so I'm going through the bathroom backpack and I'm like, but the first thing I'm gonna come up with is these flip flops. Um, I, there's a swimming pool here. It goes from one foot to three foot. Um, they don't want me getting in it. I'm gonna get in it. Uh, Cause that can work my legs out. Uh, I said, you know, as long as I don't get the neck uh, uh, down in the water, you know, or splash it up on the, and most everything, you know, right now the, the stereo strips have not come off from where they tunneled into my, my neck to repair the broken bones. But so that's first thing. So I, I can use those, and then I'm constantly going through stuff to figure out what I can't use. So now here's here's a crazy example. Um, when I was in the hospital, they gave me this spoon. <laughs> you know, now your hands are shaking because you you know you you you're you're all messed up. You got a broken neck. You can't. You know, they, all they can do is lean you up in the bed. You can't lean up on your own, you know. So you're leaned up in the bed. And so, you, and of course, the soup's way out here. So you get in that soup and your hand's shaking. So the soup's flying all over the place. You know, it's getting on the sheets, getting on everything. Then, of course, you got the collar around your neck. And then you go to dump it in and you dump it right down the collar. So what I came up with was one of the guys, I, I said, you know, I, I kept asking him, I said, you got... I'm, this is, I'm actually just going to keep this. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it. <laughs> but I said, for eating cereal and soup, I said, you know, is, is there a big spoon? And, and I, it just kind of followed me around the hospital because if you, if you follow my videos, they moved me about six times in the hospital to various rooms, uh, especially when I was in intensive care. And so I got this big old spoon and I could dip it down into the, so, you know, of course you, your hand's still vibrating, but look, Look how big it is. So you just get just a little bit down in the spoon, and then I could get it get it up. Of course, I'm leaning back like this, and I would just get it up to my my face, and then I could drink it like that. Now, I still put a put a rag right here, you know, and uh, to make sure that because you still spill a little bit, but it wasn't much. And so I'm just I'm just keeping the sucker because it, it brings back memories, huh? Um, here's another thing that I'm going to keep, and uh, since I've had uh, the CCP virus twice. I'm going to tell you this little sucker would have come in handy, and even now, I mean, it's it's still a not not a bad exercise tool. And I want to show you how to use this real quick. So you suck in on this thing, and so your goal is to get this thing right here. If you ever have never have never used one of these, or haven't used one for a while, so you're trying to get the screen thing up as high as you can maybe at least to the mark, or you can adjust this mark here and you know, try to get more and more. And then this little green thing right here, you want to get it into the middle. They actually have a little smiley face on there. So I'll be taking that home with me, but uh, this is just going to go in a bag, uh, or actually I'll probably keep it over here with my stuff to, to work on. Um, i got to buy more of this and running out. Uh, before you do anything catheter-wise or... Um, uh, you know, everything's got to be sanitary. I'm, I'm constantly wiping these floors with antiseptic wipes, constantly wiping the counters, I'm constantly wiping everything in the bathroom. Um, we'll talk about Kath in here in a minute, uh, but this is uh, just hand sanitizer. I've got, uh, they gave me, uh, well, two things of this from the hospital that I brought. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I packed everything. We're going to get into that. So you, you always, before you do anything, just hand sanitize everything. Uh, just put that aside. So I'm going through my um, my bathroom backpack, and guess what I find? Foot powder. So right over here, luckily they finally found my tennis shoes. They, I thought they'd been thrown away. And uh, and then I've got my hikers over here, and I've been wearing those. So that'll be good. I'll put some foot powder in the shoes. Um, here's something that I bought at the pharmacy. Oh, man, let's talk about the toenails. Um, I was trying to get a pedicure for the toenails, and... Uh, I couldn't get, I mean, it was going to cost me $90 and I had to take an override. It was about a $20 override. So literally to cut the toenails after they hadn't been cut for two months, um, it was going to run me about uh, $130, $140, $50. And so I, had, I got some toenail clippers in my supplies that when they brought that bathroom backpack. And then it occurred to me, um, because I was feeling, I got to be feeling good and you got to be feeling strong because I don't have much strength in my fingers. I mean, look at these puny puny little arm, puny little arms, Arnold. But, um, so this is a nail restore fungal formula. You can get whatever you want. And uh, of course, you know, I already had a little bit of fungus on my toenails, but man, it really grew. 
And so what I did with the toenail clippers, and it took a long time, I'm going to tell you, um, is you just cut a little bit into that toenail each time. Now, did some of them break down into the quick? Well, look at here. You can kind of see that this one did. So I'm constantly sanitizing my feet. Um, and then I'm putting this on to, for, the, uh, for the fungus. Um, let's get into cathing just a little bit. This is, this is the Bopro uh, Plus Pocket. At the request of certain individuals, the lecture on how to cath yourself has been moved to the end of this video and is rated R for the faint of heart who do not wish to learn how to do it on their own or that is just TMI, too much information. So you can watch this video to the end and then if you want to watch that section of the video you can or you can tune out. Peace out. Um, here's, an, here's another crazy thing. So this was, this was in a drawer. It was nothing that they gave me. Uh, but like I said, they said they, anything that was left in the room they were to throw away. And I just brought it back. It was Aquacell foam. And I thought, well, you know, when would I ever use this? You know, I don't know. Bring it with me. You know, I just, I, I just packed every damn thing. So check it out. Well, you can't see, but the collar was digging in right down here where my collarbone is sticking out because I exercised one time with the collarbone. And uh, so this thing's been rubbing and uh, I noticed the area is red. So guess what? I put one of these foam patches on there. So it came in handy. I, I never even thought I would ever use it. So you never know. Um, here's a, this was a neat little thing they gave me. I'm constantly, when I'm just sitting watching TV, it's a little sponge. I'm trying to get to where, uh, you know, I get some grip in my hands. I still can't, like, turn the top on a pop bottle or, uh, you know, to get the cap off of a... Hey, let's show you that real quick. This is, this is pretty cool. So when they gave me the, um, the, the, the medicines, um, this is gabapropin. Uh, this is for nerve pain. Boy, the wonder drug. Um, God, I mean, I had, it was like having gout. Uh, let's put the sponge away. So um, all you do... And this was a technique that the pharmacist showed me. Nobody showed me it. You'd think that these things would, you would learn at the rehab facility. But what you can do, because if I just grab it and I try to twist, I don't have the strength, you know. It's, it's handicap proof. Isn't it wonderful that our government develops this stuff? But anyway, so what you can do is just take two hands and push in and turn. See that? Because I'm using what's left of my, my upper body muscles. And, and then you turn and then... Look at there, I got it open. And I actually shut it all the way because I, I, I'm bumping stuff around all the time. And, and you know, I don't, I don't need to play pickup for a thousand pills off the floor. So I just make sure it's sealed. Let's get another, another sip of the coffee. Mmm. What, about four o'clock in the morning now? Mmm. Good stuff. So the next thing was, um, I don't know why, but in the hospital, uh, my eyes dried up. And uh, they, boy, I tell you, I, I, anytime you get something going in the, um, the rehab uh, or the hospital, they, they'll ask you every single time, do you want your eye drops? You know, we're going to give you your eye drops. And you're like, well, when your eyes are dry, which mine were, I mean, of course, I'm getting them every time. But after a while, my eyes got back to normal and I didn't need them. But I brought them with me just in case because uh, they were just throw, going to throw it away. Um, so, and I really haven't had to use them here in the hotel room. Actually, my eyes are kind of dry right now. I might, when this video is done, see this? I mean, I'm, that's another thing I wanted to talk about was um, everything goes in waves. Uh, you know, today uh, I was just, I was wiped out. And so uh, it's real important that um, when you're feeling okay, uh, you know, do what you can. Uh, wash your dishes, you know. Go around the room, stage stuff, uh, bag stuff that you know you're not going to use. Stage stuff, you know, for rock. I always have a catheter kit along with the lubricant, along with the hand sanitizer sitting on the bench, ready to go. Because if I feel like crap, you know, you don't want to be looking for that stuff. The scissors, for example, um, right here, these, these sit on the back of the toilet so that I know where they are. You know, you don't want to be having to look for them. If you're feeling like crap, you know, and especially if you're really, really feeling bad, you're rolling around in a wheelchair in your hotel room. It might take you 15 minutes just to find it. So let's get into the, the next thing. Now these are these are some directions for, for using 
the putty, and we'll get into the putty, um, which actually is working pretty good for my fingers. Hey, on a positive note, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, you know, these two bottom fingers are numb from the nerve damage, and these two have been numb, but I think I'm actually getting some feeling in this finger right here from all, of, and I bet it's from all of the work that I've been doing on my, on my uh, hands. But this is just a bunch of directions that you can do with the putty. And so here's the putty. And uh, by the way, funny story about this. <laughs> I laid it on the bed. It's like, uh, it's like um, you know, remember the, in the movies, the blob, you know, and it just kind of spreads out? Well, that's what it did on a bedspread. And then I couldn't get it out of the bedspread. I felt bad, man. I mean, I, I destroyed an entire bedspread with my putty. So you always put it back in the container, you know, and, and then, of course, you get it out and then you can manipulate it. Um, here's another thing that I do uh, when I'm sitting and watching TV. They gave me these uh, rubber bands and, uh, you know, they're silly in the rehab because you need to be learning how to walk and how to get upstairs and everything practical, like getting the caps off of um, uh, pill bottles. You know, these are the things that they need to be teaching you in rehab. But instead, you know, they'll sit there and they'll put this, you know, basically this was the only exercise they did was they bring it up here. And, and, and then I put it next to my knees and then sit there and do this number. And you only get an hour of PT a day and you're like, okay. And, and so you waste, you know, 10 minutes doing this stupid shit, you know. And then they give you a ball, which I didn't get a ball to take back to the hotel room. But at least they gave me this. So what you can do is while you're watching TV, um, is I just do, I do everything. Of course, I can't use the right hand. But, you know, I can put it right here, pull on it. Now that works on my, my hand and my foot and you can just kind of be innovative you know you maybe just put it between your feet down here and then just stretch it out this way i can, can I get it in the photo I'm trying so you're just stretching it this way you know so you're just sitting there kind of working out while you're watching tv and it comes in it comes in real handy now you know and then they gave me a green one too which i think is a little bit so these i'm just telling you to get yourself back in shape you just got to do this and i wish i could work on the right arm but i can't Get rid of that. Um, this is another stupid thing. So they gave me this, and it's just kind of a grippy type of surface. And uh, and so for getting like pot bottles and stuff open, it might work someday. Right now, I still don't have the strength even with this. Here's another stupid thing. We were working on because I was getting all that rubbing right here. Now you would think in the rehab they would know to put that 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 band aid that I just put on there. That solved the problem. But instead, we were trying to put these stupid little sponges in there and that didn't work but but you know what the sponges come in handy because uh, sometimes I do stuff them underneath the collar if I'm going for a long walk and uh, I can't you can't make them stay in there but they stay in pretty good uh, until you, you you do something so um, this is another thing uh, alcohol wipes so you know sanitation so I'm constantly I know that on the you know my, my screen has a plastic uh, protect cover so I just, I'm cleaning that phone, trying to keep everything sanitary. So I'm constantly, and these are, you know, like I said, I kidnapped these out of the hospital room. So I got those for cleaning. Now this is what I was talking about. These are those absorbent pads. Now, am I still using them? Hell yeah. Uh, I, I don't trust myself. I could lose continence at some point. So I got the sofa protected. Uh, I put one of these in the bed. And so basically this, what this is, is it's just an absorbent cloth. Now to tell you how wasteful they are in the hospital, whether or not you pooped on these or not, they just come in and throw them away when they change the sheets. And uh, why, I don't know. I mean, because there's nothing on it. But, but anyway, so I started kidnapping them whenever I, I would, uh, whenever I could get out of the bed, I would take one of these and I'd stick it in the drawer. And so now I've got this huge supply of these. I don't have to buy these. Uh, and I brought them with me from the, uh, the hospital to, to the room. Um, this is, I wanted to talk about the hospital socks. Uh, Well, the GoPro cut off, so I took the opportunity to restage the area. So let's just get into it. So I was talking about these uh, medium socks. Don't get the mediums. I don't care if your foot's only a, an inch long because uh, they just roll right off your feet. Um, you know, I thought they'd be better. I brought them back to the room with me and, uh, you know, used the, um, these are the large socks. And, uh, you know, I noticed uh, I cleaned my feet to just a little while. Like I said, sanitary, sanitary, sanitary. And I used um, uh, those uh, cloths that you use for cleaning the tip. I, you know, nothing goes to waste. Once I'm done with that, I clean everything I can. So, 
and I want to make sure my feet are sterile because I did cut the nails back to the quick a little bit with that technique of just cutting a little bit of a nail at a time because the nails are so brittle that they shattered on me and um, so I want to make sure that I keep this area very sanitized um, so here's here's a purchase that I made at Amazon and of course I got to wash these check these out man these were only like a, well 12 bucks 13 bucks but I'm going to tell you, I, you know, the good news is, I mean, I always try to make sure it's stuff that I can take back home and use in Florida. And I'm not constantly hiking. And, and I always, when I get shorts or hiking pants, you know, always make sure that you get the pockets. I'm going to tell you, you're always going to have something in the pocket. And what's nice is, you know, you can just use the elastic, but it's kind of going to slip down if you put something heavy in the pocket. So you got this straw string that you can, you know, draw in and, and tighten up. So you got that. Now, I just wanted this as an example of something that, you know, I'll put anything that I'm not going to be using that has been brought to me by people, because uh, I've only had two visits since I've been here, maybe, well, I guess Moe, yeah, two visits, and they brought just a bunch of stuff, and they don't know what to grab, so of course I'm not going to be wearing, you know, these booties down into the pool, um, so this is an example of something I've just put in a, and by the way, that's another thing, as you, as you go, you get groceries or you get plastic bags, keep them all and then you know you can stuff stuff like this down in there because that way it's out of the way and then because uh, you never know I mean look I was almost kicked out of the room yesterday so you got to be able to grab this stuff quick and, and keep it organized um, here's another thing I, I got was uh, you know for snacks I got some pretzels, peanuts, Cheetos uh, when I did my order this is something they gave me at the rehab facility and these are the um, I forget what they're called you know they're for holding uh, the, the stitchers and they got the, the lock in there and I've certainly used these quite a bit. Thank God they gave them to me. Um, this uh, this uh, is in my backpack. Now when you make movies like this, um, you know, I back them up, I put, put it on Rumble and I put it on YouTube. In fact, I'm in the process of doing that as I make videos. Um, and I, by the way, I've, as soon as I get everything cleaned, right now I'm short on disk space because videos take a lot of space. This five terabyte backup device, I have two of these. Um, and luckily when they brought my computer stuff, um, they brought those because they were down in the computer backpack. So um, this is a clock uh, because right now I'm using my phone for everything. So my phone's got, it's got an alarm that goes off every two hours because there's always something. Either I'm cathing or taking meds or um, uh, uh, so and, and basically with this collar on, you really only want to sleep two hours because I've noticed that everything in my body just stiffens up. and. Um, you know, and that's not good. So to get that circulation going again, um, it's important to just sleep two hours. You know, so I'll probably be going back to bed. There's no schedule. I mean, I'll probably go to bed at six o'clock in the morning, um, and then just wake up whenever I wake up. Um, of course, this is, uh, you know, you're going to want your dietary fiber. That I just went with the CVS brand, but it, the only thing they have is a raspberry flavor. It's horrible. Why the hell they want a flavor of Metamucil? I guess it's supposed to be the same as Metamucil. But I don't know if it is. Now this is something for good for backpacking, hiking, and for uh, recovery from breaking your neck. And this is emergency. I throw this in with the um, um, uh, this stuff, oh, with the uh, Metamucil and everything. Uh, you know, just try to throw everything together. Um, last thing, check this out. I can put them way over here. Shouldn't have done that. Was um, when when they went through the house, they threw away my. My straight razor, the, the real estate people did. They threw away all my reading glasses. I, I don't know why they throw that stuff away. So I ordered these from, from Amazon. I, I did get the, the kit, even though they threw away the glasses. But check these out. I mean, these are pretty cool. Um, I only paid, I don't know, maybe 15 bucks. And I got three pair of these. And these are 3.0, you know. So, I mean, I'm blind. I can't see. <laughs> You can't see the camera, but you know, it's good to have a variety of reading glasses. I got 2.0s down in Florida, I got 2.5s, and now I got the 3.0s, so I didn't waste my money, right? Why buy another set of 2.5s when I got like five of them down in Florida? Um, so I guess that's it. The one last thing was the GoPro kit. Um, you know, in here, I bought, uh, bought some extra batteries uh, for the GoPro uh, because they go down pretty quick. And then I bought this battery charger, and then I've just kind of loaded down in here as I discover stuff that I need. Like, you know, this is a set of, of course, I put tape on there. At first I was using, I couldn't get that little uh, memory card out. 
But you had to be real careful with these, but they come in handy for other stuff. And there's, there's other stuff down in here. I won't go into the GoPro. We've talked about that in the past. So that's it for this video. Um, I want to make a everybody's an idiot video. <laughs> which, which, I don't know if I'll get to that tonight because I'm actually doing another hiking video that I'm going to put up on uh, Rumble. I've got them all in sequence, and I, that's something I want to figure out how to do. I mean, I gotta, I gotta go back through YouTube and delete a bunch of videos and clean it all up. And I'm gonna redo the channel. I'm probably gonna get away from that cybersecurity guy and call it Kirk's hiking or um, uh, Kirk's motorcycle chats or something, you know, and and just put a whole new channel out and just delete everything and or move it. What I want to do is just move it to the new channel and get rid of all my playlists that, that are irrelevant because I didn't know what I was doing. It was just a hobby. But that's down the road. All right, let's do the mantra. Freedom, oh freedom. Get way up here. Someday, someday I'll get back to the free state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis. And if you're a Democrat, Stay the hell out of Florida. Move to New York, where you can get a nine trimester abortion. Move to California. Why do you want to live in a Republican state? Huh? I think we're pretty red at this point. And I believe the Spanish and the Cuban community found out what Democrats are all about. We got an open border in Texas, and everybody can come across. But when the Cubans tried to get here, we sent them home. Think about that. Peace out. Stay free. So, <laughs> I've had mixed feelings on doing uh, this because some people have asked me to describe the cathing procedure and other people have said, no, 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 we too EMI, too much information. So uh, I'm just putting this clip in the video. If you don't want to learn how to cath yourself, and I'm not getting, you know, I'm just describing it. But if it's going to gross you out or you're just not real interested or you think maybe you're never going to cast yourself, cut the video off right here. Stop. Cease and desist. Don't watch no more. That's all I got to say. Unless you want to learn how to cast yourself. You know, all you do is you, you open this up. The problem is everything is disposable. I wish we had some sort of... It seems like we could reuse some of this uh, for... But I mean, you know, once it's, it's, it's basically just a bag and then it's got a tube, okay, and on that tube it's, it's very well lubricated um, and then it's, it's got a stopper on the end. I was, gonna, I was gonna open up one and show it to you, but my supplies are so low, I, I can't spare one. And then, you know, um, anyway, I, and I was afraid I might contaminate it if I showed it to you and then took it into the bathroom. And uh, so anyway, but you, but you just take the, the bag and it's got, places where you can hook your fingers. Now, it was really hard in the hospital because I couldn't get out of the bed. Um, so you're, you know, you gotta be real careful to not get pee all over the bed. <laughs> it's impossible. So, you know, when I finally could get up and get into a chair, I'd put a towel over the chair or uh, we'll get into it here in a minute, but we've got these uh, absorbent mats. Um, but at the time, you know, they were just bringing them in. I didn't have my own supply. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, so you take the tube and uh, it's got a little plastic tip and you just, I, I don't want to gross you out, but I'm just trying to educate you because these are the things that I've learned. I mean, this, this took a lot of work. I've been, I've been, I've been instructed by the best of the best of the best on this because I mean, many nurses had different techniques and, and I just can tell you what works for me. So, um, so basically there's some lubricants. Yeah, here it is. So this is your lubricant. This is uh, this is called lubricant jelly. Okay, I guess you could probably use Vaseline, and you put that on the tip. I'm just going to call it the tip. You can use your imagination, and then I take the tip of this, the plastic piece, and I kind of just I, well I put the lubricant on the tip, and then I then I take the tip of this and just kind of get get a little bit of lubricant on it, and then you, you stick it in. And so and of course you know make sure that you kind of the sack is free and uh, in the, in the you know, you got, you got a hold of it, and then of course you're going to take two fingers and you got to hold that plastic piece in, and then you just start ramming that, uh, that tube on down until, you know, you get it. And, and the thing is, I was, I was going fast, you know, at first, and, uh, and that resulted in some blood, because, uh, you know, 
you're, you're going down some sensitive areas, and uh, I actually, I think I'm developing um, a little bit of um, callus in there, because I haven't had any blood for quite some time, which is good. I just got the urinary tract infection. <laughs> you know? Well, I apologize for the lighting. I mean, I can see from, from right here, you know, it says every time I move, it's, but I got to have all the lights on, I guess. Well, here, let's cut this one off. That might help with the lighting. Hold on. Ah. Let's see if that's not so blinding in the background there. All right. So, uh, so the next thing is, um, uh, so we talked about Kath and oh yeah, and then so you go down in there slow, but you got to you know you got to jerk your hand back because otherwise you, your tube tries to push it back out. So you got to really kind of move fast and then slowly push it in until you see the, the pee rolling into the bag and you got that bag hooked with a couple of fingers. And I kind of try to keep it lower than the, uh, the sack here because you want that pee to just flow down right into that bag, which you can't do in a damn bed or a chair. So that's good that at least now I can sit on a bench and just hold it right here. And you know, I'll get it with, by the way, I, uh, thousand milliliters of pee gets pretty damn heavy so I use two fingers to hold on to that bag until it fills up which I, you're not supposed to fill it up <laughs> but I am right now because I'm low on supply um, so that's kind of the catheter thing oh yeah and then of course what I do there's a plastic piece all the way back in the back so when it's all the way in you only got about that much tube to 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 to, to put your finger behind but I grab that plastic piece and then, of course, you're holding that plastic piece here, and then you just pull slowly and smoothly directly out, okay? And then eventually you'll see where the, uh, the end of the cathing uh, uh, tube reaches the plastic tip right here. And then, of course, you just release and just pull it, pull it on out. And then there's an art to, um, to actually uh, uh, putting it in the toilet. Now, if it fills up too much, when you cut into that bag, because I use scissors, it's got a little tear thing. But if you tear it, I mean, pee goes everywhere, man. I mean, it's on the walls. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a volcano, you know. So what you got to do is get it weight, especially when it's full. But if it's not full, you just kind of cut the cut the plastic. Now you can rip it too, as long as it's not full. But mine are going to be full at this point. So I get it way down in the toilet. Now I'm sorry, you're just going to have to stick your hands into the toilet water. You know, that's why, you know, just flush a couple of times and try to get it as clean as you can. And in fact, today I'll probably buy like some Clorox or something because I'm hoping to go to the pharmacy. Well, not today, tomorrow. Today's Sunday. So, but what I do is I hold it, you know, you still got those two fingers holding on to it and it's a different section and then you just cut right. Of course, if you're down in the toilet, if it's full, get it way down in there and then you can, of course, the, thing, the bag's going to fall under the toilet too. So you, it's kind of messy. And then you just cut it and just let, let it drain out the top and then slowly bring it up and then once you got it where you want it now like I said if it wasn't full all the way you wouldn't have to do all that you just cut it and then there's a little uh, ring down here and then you just take it and you empty that bag into the toilet so that's all about Kathin uh, just about now a couple other things about Kathin is um, they gave me these uh, Thermo Walk Box Protect now these cloths come in one big piece and they're I mean they're intense and in the hospital, like they would just use the whole damn cloth, and you know, just to clean the, they just clean the tip, and then they throw the whole thing away. And so, because I'm running out of supplies, I take a pair of scissors, and I cut the cloth into thirds, so that way I get three or six. Well, there's only two cloths in here, so you get six casts out of one bag. Um, now, when I go to the pharmacy, you can buy this stuff in liquid form. It's called an antiseptic. You can talk to the pharmacist about it, and then I'm good. I, that. I'll just spray right on and then wipe it off with a, um, a sanitized uh, rag or towel or something. So, but anyway, so, but I have to preserve these. Um, so that gets that out of the way. Now, in the hospital, they had me in this type of diaper right here. Um, I didn't like it. Uh, see how it, it just kind of folds out and then it's got Velcro strips. And what happens is, is these Velcro strips catch on everything. Now. Is this a substantial diaper? Yeah, I mean, so if you've got somebody or a nurse or something to help you put this thing on, I mean, this is a good thing to wear, especially, you know, when, when I was in the hospital, I mean, I had no control over my bowels. And so, 
you know, this was really important uh, to, 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 I mean, look at the load that thing can hold, you know, and so uh, I'm not trying to gross you out, but <laughs> you don't want it running down your legs as, you know, as you're working your way to the toilet, you know, in the, in the wheelchair, and you don't want it going all over the wheelchair either. So anyway, this, this is a handy diaper if you, if you don't have any continence whatsoever, but to me, to wear it here in the room, you know, uh, and actually I've got uh, one good development is I've got control of my bowels, folks. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm out of the diaper. I'm actually wearing my briefs at this point, but I did want to talk about it because you never know. I might end up going back to where, but I won't be wearing this. I, I guess I'll take it home with me. I don't know. I'm not going to throw it away. Um, so this is the diaper that I've been wearing since I got to the hotel room. And you see that, well, you can't probably see it, but there's some blue lines right here. And that's, that means that's the back of the diaper. And it just goes on just like a set of briefs. You just put one foot in, you know, and you just bring it on. And, uh, and, and by the way, this is all, um, I, I found out the hard way. <laughs> this is all like cellulose. So it's very absorbent. But when it absorbs, of course, it expands, and that's, you know, I guess that's the nature of the beast. And uh, so, um, when it, you know, in one particular instance, I had a very liquid uh, movement, and, and if, boy, this thing, I, did, I took it in the shower with me, and I was trying to wipe, of course, it broke open, and the cellulose went all over the shower. <laughs> it, just, it was a disaster, let's just put it that way, but at least I got it, because I didn't want to just throw the poop in the trash can. I'm in a hotel room, you know. In the hospital, they just throw it right in the trash can, screw it, you know, whoever, whoever's cleaning. 